Welcome back, welcome back. This is going to be the introduction for Unit 9, BTEC Level 3 Engineering, Work Experience in the Engineering Sector. It's going to be nice and easy research for parts A and B, and for parts C and D, you're going to actually go out and find some work experience, do it and reflect on that work experience. So let's jump into this. So what is this going to be? Let me bring my pen up just so I can note things down. So it's going to be 60 guided learning hours. So this is typically half of what an exam unit is. So it's going to be internally assessed, meaning that there's only going to be coursework. There will be no exam and you will have to do, you must do work, work experience or work placement for you to finish this course and actually pass it. So the sections, there are four sections in total. This is assignment A, B, C and D. Now, the way this works, they've joined assignments A and B and they've joined assignments C and D. Good and bad is in that these are just very long assignments but good in they're very very simple so we're not going to worry too much about them so for assignment a we're going to examine the benefits of work experience in engineering for own learning and development assignment b develop a work experience plan to support own learning and development assignment c carry out work experience tasks to meet set objectives assignment d on how work experience influences own personal and professional development very simple and again these are joint a and b that's assignment one and c and d that's assignment two so work experience you must you have to carry out work experience or placement in order to complete this unit that's a must here again, we have learning aims A and B, and we have the criteria broken down. So I'm going to show this in a bit more detail in the latest section, which is going to be from the assignment briefs themselves. This should be assignment C and D, not B and C, but it's here anyway. So this is where we're actually going to do some work experience, and this is where we actually reflect on the work experience. Working online, I always recommend to anyone, use Microsoft Word on OneDrive, because it saves your work automatically. You don't have to do anything. It's easy to share. I created this for my students, but this can be for anyone here on YouTube watching as well. When working and doing coursework, basic word processing, basic Excel spreadsheets, basic PowerPoints, I highly recommend using Word Online. Or if you're a Google person like myself, you use uh, Google Drive. They have Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. Same as Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Completely free. It backs your work up automatically. So you're never going to have that thing where your computer stops working, your hard drive fails, your SSD fails, and your, all your work is gone. It's always going to be backed up by those services. Um, it's always a good idea to create folders and have the relevant work in that folder. This, again, this is something I created for my students specifically. This is not something you have to do. But for example, go to OneDrive or Google Drive, whichever one is fine. Create a folder called BTEC Level 3 Engineering. All right, and inside that folder, you're going to create another folder called Unit 9 Work Placement. And maybe you have multiple folders in here. Unit 1, Principles of Engineering. Unit, uh, what did I do? Unit 6, Microcontrollers. Whatever you have to do, you create multiple folders inside there. Put your work in those folders. So for example, in my Unit 9 folder, Work Placement, I'm going to have two files. I'm going to have Learning Aim A and B. This is one Word document. So this is a single Word document with learning aims A and B, learning aims C and D. That's another Word document. So in that folder, I'm going to have Word document one, Word document two. Just as a basic example, this is not something you have to follow. Whatever works best for you is fine. And I did Google Classroom here. That's the same thing. Now, I am going to go to my location where I have all my files. I believe I have it here as well. I'm going to look for unit nine. Yeah, here we go, Unit 9 Work Placement. So as I've mentioned before, it is a level three unit. It is internal, meaning that there is no exam. It's just coursework. This does not mean that the examiner does not see your work. This simply means the examiner will, in most cases, request some work from the college and yours might be chosen. So please make sure that you do all the work. Don't just think that because it's not an exam, examiners won't see. That's not how it works. Your, the examiner might randomly request people from a class and the teachers or the school doesn't get to choose what they send in some cases. They just send names that have been requested. Guided learning hours again, 60. Here we have the unit brief. I will put this link in the description. So, well, not this link, but where it can be found on the Pearson's website. So everyone will have access to this document. It's completely free for everyone, not just for teachers, right? Learning aims have already gone through. This is a summary of the unit, more or less the same thing in the assignment briefs. 
the thing I wanted to really show was this section here. When you're doing your assignment, when you're actually researching things and, and you're not sure about something, you're kind of stuck, this, as this content section of the uh, specification gives you really good speaking points. So let's say you're trying to clarify expectations for employment in engineering and you have no idea what that even means. You can come here, steal some points from here. You feel free to steal these points and then you go away and research individually each of these points to get a better understanding of what needs to be done. So exploring career options. If you have no idea what careers there are in engineering, which would be very weird, but still, it's still possible, right? Working in different engineering sectors. Example, aerospace is one. Manufacturing is another one. Electrical and electronic is one. Maybe computer systems engineering could be one as well. So you can come here, get ideas for the actual criteria that you're working on. Let me scroll down some more. Let me scroll past all of this. And here we have the assessment criteria. But I'm not going to read it from here because this is very all over the place confusing in my opinion. So let me go back to my document. Let me go to learning AM, AMB. Let me zoom out. And here, again, this gives you a very nice scenario. Gives you something to use in context. So you're not just randomly answering questions and working to P1. You, you have an idea as to why you're doing P1. Why are you doing P2? So the task is broken down here, but I'm going to skip all of this and go to the assessment criteria. This confuses people quite a bit. We never work from top to bottom or from bottom to top. What we do, we work based on the assignment and the criteria. So typically, well, not typically, but in every case, P is for pass, M is for merit, and D is for distinction, right? That's how it works. So we ideally want to get pass done first, then we move on to merit, and then we move on to distinction. So that's the way it works. I don't think anyone should aim for a pass. This is a very, very easy unit. It's pure, purely research for the first half anyway. Everyone should aim for a merit or a distinction. Now, the way this works, remember we have assignments A, B, C, and D, but the first part has assignments A and B joined together. So we look for the lowest P first. So pass is the first thing. We look for the lowest one. We go to P1, right? And as you can see beside it, it says um, A dot P1. Nine just means unit nine. Assignment A, criteria P1. So that's what this shortened form is. Assignment, uh, sorry, um, unit nine, assignment A, criteria P1, pass one, right? We do that first. We, we do all of this. When we're finished with that, we go on to assignment A, P2, we do all of this. Now we do not go on to P3 straight away. In my opinion, I think everyone should aim for a merit or a distinction on this. So everyone should be doing merit criteria as well. And the way this works, you have to go back up and you have to look where, where else has assignment A. And if we look to P3, P3 has assignment B, grade P3. But if we go up, we can see that this one here, it says 9-a.m1, that's assignment A, merit 1. So that's the order we should typically try to work in. Par uh, sorry, not pass, merit, then distinction. But finish all the criteria for one assignment first before moving on. Because if you don't finish it, you won't be able to get the distinction later on or the merit later on. So again, assignment A, P1, then assignment A, pass 2 or P2, assignment A, M1 or merit 1. Then after we've done all the assignment A stuff, we look for the next assignment B starting from the lowest one. So I can see that this says assignment B, P3. I know that's going to be the next one because we've already done P1, we've already done P2. So assignment B, P3, which is pass criteria 3. Assignment B, P4, pass criteria 4. And then we go back up again, which is a the way they've done this is a bit weird, but it's fine. We can figure it out. Assignment B, M2. So for this specific assignment, it's going to be P1. Let me see if I can put this on this line here, just so everyone can see it. Zoom in some more. So it's going to be P1, P2, M1. That's for assignment A. Then we're going to have P3, P4, M2, and then we have D1 at the very end. So this is the order we actually do the assignment in. And again, I know this is quite confusing the way they've done this, but this is how it works. This is the grading criteria for learning aims A and B. And they even give you more help in the assignment uh, criteria. So here we have 
the to do this. So task one, this is what we have to do. And when we go when it says the role of work experience in supporting the development of your professional skills and personal attributes for work in engineering. So this coupled with what we have for P1 here gives you, in my honest opinion, enough detail for you to then go away, do some research, um, get some knowledge from your own self. That's fine. Perfectly fine. And to answer P1 in its entirety. That's how it will typically work. But I will explain all of this once we start P1, P2, M1. I'm going to go through everything in detail. So stay tuned and I hope that was useful.